All right, we're gonna do um, beginning videos of the arm and scapula, clavicle, humerus, and then we'll continue on a different video for the lower arm. But I'm just holding it here just to kind of show you how all the pieces fit together. Uh, how the clavicle finds its position anterior, the scapula posterior, and then that creates a spot for the humerus to, to attach. And we'll go through all these uh, separately, but just want to kind of give you a, a little overview first. So we remember that this is the rib cage, and this is the sternum. We have manubrium, body, and xiphoid process. We have a couple of notches in here. This, these are clavicular notches because that's where the clavicle is going to connect. And then we have the jugular notch. So let's talk about the clavicle first. Right. I'm just leave this here in the back for a moment. So it has two ends to it. Okay, I refer to this as the blunt end. That's the sternal end. That's going to attach to the manubrium in the clavicular notch. We refer to this as kind of the flat spoon end. That's the acromial end, and that is going to articulate with the scapula at the acromial process. So if we hold this together best that we can, we have an articulation here at the sternal end, and we have an articulation here, not gonna happen very well, at the chromial end. And this acts like a little strut or support, meaning it keeps the scapula posteriorly. If we didn't have it, if it didn't exist, you know, this could move around a lot easier, much more loose, and that would alter the position of our arm. So we have this little strut in here to kind of keep it in position. So this is pretty simplistic. Again, sternal end, chromial end, and we do try to recognize this little bump. That's the conoid tubercle. Okay, that's where the subscapularis muscle is going to, uh, subclavius muscle is going to uh, attach, subclavius muscle. Right? So that's pretty simplistic. This, on the other hand, is not. This has a lot more parts to it. And again, we're holding it here in position. So let's flip it over. Okay. And here we see the scapula. A couple of things to, to uh, review. You see that the pointy end is, is facing down, so this is inferior. Uh, the wide area is at the top that's superior. The long, smooth border is closest to the spine that's medial. Uh, this border, ending in the joint surface for the humerus, is the lateral border. So we get some bearings. The smooth underside that rests against the rib so it can move easily is the anterior aspect and the big spine is on the posterior aspect. So now that we have the orientation, we can kind of go around the horn with the parts. Inferior angle, medial border, superior angle, superior border. Lateral border ending in the what's called glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa, that is the joint surface that will ultimately create the shoulder joint, a ball and socket synovial joint. We have some processes, some things that stick off. We have a big, robust spine, spine of the scapula, ending in the acromial process or acromion that articulates with the acromial end of the clavicle. You have this little finger-like projection, that's the coracoid process. It's a place for muscle attachments of the upper arm. So coracoid process, acromial process, spine of the scapula. Finally, 
we name the surfaces. The su smooth surface below the spine, infraspinous fossa. This is where muscles of the rotator cuff live. The infraspinatus muscle, the teres major minor. Above the spine, supraspinous fossa, rotator cuff muscle, supraspinatus muscle. And the underside or anterior aspect, that's called the subscapula fossa, where the subscapularis muscle is found, part of the rotator cuff. Okay, all those muscles, five of them, like my hand, is the muscle tissue, come and attach to the humerus and are moving and rotating the humerus. That's what the rotator cuff does. Okay? And they live here on the scapula. Right? So that's the scapula. So we'll move finally to our humerus. Right? And like we said, the head of the humerus forms the shoulder joint or known as the gleno humeral joint, glenohumeral joint. Right. So head, the bone just below the head is called the neck, anatomical neck. The piece that sticks out, right, so it's this little bump out here, so here's the head, opposite the head, this is a tubercle, then you have a groove between another tubercle. So this is a small tubercle, lesser tubercle. This is a big tubercle, greater tubercle, and intertubicular groove between the two tubercles. They refer to this as the surgical neck. Then we come to the shaft or diaphysis. And this bone is, is better than some. If we take a little side view, you see there's a little elevation here, all right? So the deltoid muscle comes up over and attaches to what's known as the deltoid tuberosity. That's on the shaft. And then we make our way down here to the elbow, aspects of the elbow. Between my fingers, this is known as the condyle. The condyle is broken into two sections. Section one, the trochlear, and section two, the capitula. The bone on either side of the condyle, epicondyle, epicondyle. This is the medial epicondyle. It's on the same side as the head, medial, medial, and lateral epicondyle. These are attachment points for the muscles that are found in your forearm muscles that extend and flex the wrist are attached to these epicondyles. Finally, there's a depression here next to the trochlea. This is the coronoid fossa. There's a big deep depression in the back next to the trochlea. That is the olecranon fossa.